Renault Espace, a story about continuous reinvention. The attractiveness of cars varies from strictly emotional to purely rational. The French have the unique ability to combine these two extremes. One of the most fascinating cars in the field, which is both very rational and very emotional, but also innovative, unique and avant-garde, is the Renault Espace. Welcome to the Space Miracle. It is 1984 when Espace 1 is introduced. It is a new vehicle typology. The European mother of MPVs has a long history, which started in 1978 when Chrysler put 100 designers on project T115, the development of the Chrysler Voyager. British car designer Fergus Pollock, then working for Chrysler UK in Coventry, part of the Simca Group, was intrigued by the T115 project. With Matra Automobiles Coventry, also part of Simca, he designed a seven-seater, the P16, based on Simca 1307 parts. Chrysler Europe was subsequently sold to PSA, and the design P16 was further developed into prototype P18 by Matra's designer Antoine Volani. However, both brands from the PSA group, Peugeot and Citroën, saw no future in the P18. That made Matra decide in 1982 to sign a cooperation agreement with Renault, the major PSA competitor. The Renault Espace would eventually be developed jointly from the Matra P18 prototype. The complex conception of the car took nothing away from the power of the concept. The Espace was large and rectangular, but had more compact exterior dimension than any regular full-size estate and offered way more interior space. The glass versus body ratio was almost 50-50 and the plastic body with shield bumpers could really take a beating. The progressive design of the mono volume was so innovative that it took a year for it to catch on commercially. The radical design provided a low coefficient of drag and lots of interior space. The large windows, slender pillars and the enormous glass surface enhanced the light and open atmosphere in the car, whilst the beautiful fabric covered dashboard made the interior feel luxurious and warm. The two front seats could rotate 180 degrees to face the rear seats. The individual center seats could be turned into tables. All these ideas are quite normal today, but a total revolution when designed. The 1997 Espace 3 was a softer iteration. This third generation was the first completely newly developed Espace. It was now designed and produced by Renault themselves. The brand's form language at the time was soft and rounded. This worked very well for a unique and brilliantly designed Twingo, which was also a mono volume. The larger Espace on the other hand became rather visually heavy due to these creamy shapes. The front has a subtle focus above the headlights and a reasonable finesse. Especially the sides and the back look rather bulky. Despite the very spacious and innovatively designed interior, this was stylistically not an overly successful Espace reprise. The 2015 Espace 5, the Renaissance. After many brilliant designs under the leadership of chief designer Patrick Lecoumain, Renault was in heavy weather. Innovative thinking by the brand was hard to find. Customers too. A new design strategy developed by newly appointed Dutchman Laurens van der Acker based on a flower with six petals that represented six phases of life should offer a solution. Renault installed van den Acker as senior vice president of corporate design and Renault's success has been unprecedented since his appointment. The strategy clarified the question of how to set up Renault's broad brand portfolio. Simultaneously, it also generated space for a new, relevant design interpretation of each and every individual model. The Espace has always been an icon for Renault, a true flagship full of innovation. However, a radical change of course was essential for this new model. 
large MPVs fell out of favor and the Renault design team had to breathe new life into one of its most important and long-term names. The Renault design team faced a colossal task. Nevertheless, the mission succeeded. Numero 5 is the reinvention of the Espace concept. This Renaissance model has completely new proportions. It features a higher driving position and a smaller glass surface. Also larger wheels for better proportions and the beautiful stands are now part of the rejuvenated Espace design. A bit of a crossover, but different. The body is friendly, relatively baroque. It features intricate, rich details and is elegantly French. The nose, and this is an Espace first because Espace 5 is no longer a mono volume, is impressive. The down the road graphic, or how the car looks out of its eyes, is confident but sophisticated. Not aggressive as so many SUVs. Yes, the Espace is present and has a presence, but not in a brash manner. The skin of Espace, surfacing in car design language, is as full and saturated as the proportions. This is not a cold object, this is a living organism. Seen from behind, the strong shoulders break the visual height, making the formerly square looking MPV now elegant, dynamic and a modern unity. The side window graphic with its upwards curve not only makes the Espace instantly recognizable as an Espace from the side, but also emphasizes the length of the car rather than its height. The sumptuous piece of sculpture in the chrome at the D-pillar at the top of the roof is beautifully designed in three dimensions. A true example of the many consistently designed jewelry items that this car has so many of. Van den Acker's strategic vision on design has proven its effectiveness for Renault. The brand is firmly on the map with models that are honest about their origin and purpose. It must be said that the courage to innovate and to break away from the shrinking MPV segment without simply building yet another SUV is big. Commendable decision making and decision makers within Renault. However, the work really has been done by Laurens van den Acker and his team. They convinced everyone within the manufacturer to develop the new design strategy and to transform the Renault flagship, just like Renault once did in 1984.